the adults, you know, many adults in this room, I'm sure, were probably affected by the Equifax hack not too long ago. Uh, a, half of all Americans were. So, but, I mean, that's, that's all you need to steal someone's identity right there. But less so, Twitter, you know, still giving out names, phone numbers, email addresses. And, you know, they can, once this happens, a profile starts, is able to be built. Um, so I'm just going to kind of skip past that last one. But like you, when, if you just have name and phone number over here and then phone number and email over here, you, you can start stitching things together. So um, you know, there's a way to check where if you've been, an email address has been in a breach. You probably already know because you've gotten all the spam from it. Um, but it's haveibeenpwned.com. It's, it's an old internet meme. Uh, so you know, two, uh, changing your passwords. I mean, this is like kind of like basic stuff. But you know, change your passwords if it's been breached. Uh, <laughs> Two-factor authentication helps prevent, you know, all the horses from bolting from the barn, you know. But you, you can still lose you, you, the information that accesses that account in that breach, whether or not you lost the contents of that account. Um, so, these are kind of, you know, the main types of personal identifying information. You know, the you, name, date of birth, social security number, driver's license, phone number, home, email, you know. And there are ways to mitigate almost all of these. There are less legal means of mitigating the other ones, but I'm, I'm not, I, don't, I don't teach that. <laughs> um, so the easiest thing to do for your name and date of birth, just don't give it to them. There's no reason for them to actually have your real name or date of birth. If you're like buying shoes off on Nike.com, they just need to know your address. Right. You don't have to give them the other stuff. So the best way, you know, an ounce of prevention is a pound of, is a pound of cure. Um, so there's also a phone number and email address. Um, services that you can use, you know, like there's most of those. Met the give us your phone number is a human verification process. So all they want to know is that can you enter put a code that I send a message. So you can use text verified or SMSforSats.com. You can pay with Bitcoin, get credits, get a single use phone number, whatever the service like a Bitcoin ATM is asking for a phone number. You say it's not my phone number, and then it's like okay, you get the code and you put it in, and you're like you're good to go. Um, email. Uh, the same version of that would be Gorilla Mail, um, because that is like a single-use thing. So if you're trying to set up a new ProtonMail account to have for service, you know, like a, a physical account, like a good one, then they require either a phone number or an email. So you can either use Text Verified, SMS for Sats, or Gorilla Mail. It sends an email to that email. You input that code, and you the email gets deleted from that thing every hour. So it just it it's a throwaway email thing. But what you can do is create a ProtonMail off of a Gorilla Mail, and then use a thing like Simple Login which is aliases. So you can have your social media at you know, MyProtonMail, shopping, whatever you want. And if something gets breached, you just turn it off. And it doesn't actually breach your underlying ProtonMail account. Right. Um, similar thing for, you can do voice over IP numbers. I have, which I didn't bring my cards. I, I came empty handed today and realized when I was like 12 minutes away that I was like, um, but my phone number that was on my card is a voice over IP number. So I'm not handing out my actual phone number uh, to people I'm just meeting. It still goes to an app on my phone. My pseudo offers emails, phone numbers, and like browser in it, but you know, it's your use cases. So home address is probably the most difficult thing to get rid of, the least convenient one to mask, because then it requires you to go to a post office if you have a PO box. Um, and also I should say that none of this is meant to protect you from the laser focus of the federal government. Like if, unless you're in the NSA, it's gonna burn through whatever you got. <laughs> um, Username and password, you gotta get a password manager or a book. You know, util utilizing a different unit username and password is if that's all the information that gets breached, it's difficult, it's very difficult to tie that to any other previous information or use it on other sites. So I mean a, a very simple like password that you could do would be wh whatever the site is that you're doing it and like maybe like the date you signed up, you know, or or you know, like if I'm in like like Bitcoin Bay Nike dot like Nike account if we open an account on Nike, you know, stuff like that. So that way it's more memorizable. The complicated strings of characters is not more secure than just length. Uh, the dude who told everyone that in the beginning was like, actually, guys, I'm sorry for this. Sorry for all the password requirements, you know, because it doesn't actually help, you know, because if it's, if my email is Bitcoin Bay, and then, okay, I need that a one, or I need that a number, it's one. I need that a character, it's an exclamation point. That is so trivial to brute force if you just know that the previous one was Bitcoin Bay. You're like, okay, I'll just add a one and I'll capitalize the B. Okay, then I'll capitalize both the B. Like it, so it actually makes it less secure, but if you use the same one and just do those random things, 
Because if one of your accounts gets broken, they can just take that, start from there, and hash on that. And it's much more likely to lead to other stuff. So password book, if, you know, if it's really serious, don't put it on the computer. Where do we keep our seeds? Yeah. <laughs> on paper, cold storage, on steel. You know, so it, as you're getting, I don't know, if, I don't know how new people are to Bitcoin, but if you're creating seeds, which is your backups for your wallets, never take a picture of those. Never tweet them or put them on the internet or, <laughs> or put them in the cloud. Don't put them on your Dropbox. Some guy stored his seeds in a poem on Dropbox, and years later, there goes his, there goes his funds. So, you know, also what that should tell you something about your cloud service providers. Um, IP address, you can get a uh, VPN through Molvad, uh, which is the one I use. You can pay with Bitcoin on it. Um, it's great because there's no, it's not steve at gmail.com to sign up for this. It, it is order number 61947, you know, account number. So it's, you, you can have, I have one for my phone and I have one for my uh, computer. I have two different ones. Because, in, and it's $6 a month flat. Doesn't matter how long you want it for or what, or how short you want it for. It's, that's it. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, Privacy.com uh, can give you uh, the same thing that the previous alias services can for cards. You, but you know that you attach your bank account to that, and you open it. You have a debit card, and then it just opens. You know, if for my Netflix card, I I will authorize twenty dollars a month to come out of this card, and only for Netflix. Mm -hmm. So even if someone hacks your Netflix account, they can't you know upgrade your plan or whatever. Um, or Amazon, they can't start buying stuff if you set a, you know, or this is a five hundred dollar limit one use card. But once you once you spent that money, then it, it burns. So it's a nice service, um, you know. But privacy.com, privacy .com, yeah, they, they got it. It's a, it's a pretty good pretty good URL. Um, this is a little more complicated, um, so I probably won't go into this. But you can de-Google your phone. I have one. Yeah, yeah and it, you know what? It's not very convenient, is it? <laughs> Gardens of Android and, and well, Android's open source, but I, at the ecosystems around Apple and Google, they make it diff It's very sticky. They they've killed us with convenience. I mean, it's it's how everyone has a Google or Apple device in their pockets yeah. right now.